What's up, everybody? Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net, and welcome to part two of our match analysis between Novak Djokovic and Matteo Berrettini from the 2021 Wimbledon final. If you want to find out how Djokovic beat Berrettini in this match, stay tuned because it's coming up next. So if there's one thing we know, we know Berrettini has a weaker two-handed backhand, so he mixes in a ton of slice backhands to work around that and to feed into hitting forehands. He hits something like 70% of his backhands at Wimbledon as slice backhands, and it worked for him for the majority of the tournament. Let's see, though, how Djokovic adjusted to this and how he picked this apart. All right, so we have the first point here real quick. I'm gonna let this play in real time, and then I'll break it down. See a good exchange here, back and forth. A lot of big targets in this point. Pretty extended rally for these guys. There weren't a ton of super long points, but that was definitely one of the longer points. So let's jump in and break this down here real quick. You've got Djokovic returning on the ad side here, closer to zone five, he's pretty far back. And then Berrettini serving here on the ad side. Pops in a pretty good first serve right there. And Djokovic comes right away with the chip. And we see Djokovic on the return again, right? What's he doing? As soon as Berrettini is about to hit the ball and the racket's coming up, Djokovic is splitting to his right. So he's guessing again on the return, either based on the ball toss position or just what he thinks the guy is gonna hit. He might be basing it on the ball toss. I'm not 100% sure, but he's guessing to the right, chips it and establishes a pretty good deep return. Deep in zone three, Berrettini, on the back foot again, so he's neutralizing that forehand the best he can by forcing the big man back, right? It's hard to be aggressive when you're backing away from something. Takes the backhand there, and that's a weak backhand. That gives Berrettini the opportunity to really open up the court if he wants to do that and attack. But then right there, right, that's pretty incredible what he does right there. Just opens up, and we saw this a lot at the French Open against Rafa this nasty angle in zone one, just taking guys off the court. And Berrettini had that leg wrap on his leg. You can't really see it right here, but he had that leg wrap. So lunging and stretching out there probably did not help that situation, right? Berrettini does a good job of getting this slice down, but it's short in zone two. Novak's bending down here, really hunkering down with the hips. Look at how low he is. And just, I'm gonna move you the other way now. Deep in zone three. And this is really how Djokovic exploited the Berrettini slice when he could. So deep in zone three, before Novak even follows through, his eyes are looking at Berrettini and what is Berrettini gonna be hitting on the next shot? Anticipating, analyzing. Look at Berrettini, his racket starts to go back in this slice backhand preparation, right? And look at Novak, he's taking a break step here with his feet and he's already moving in before Berrettini is even close to swinging at the ball. Djokovic knows a slice is coming. So this leaves the opportunity for Djokovic to come in and attack the net now, okay? So there's the slice swing, right? Now it's coming in, but Djokovic has already moved in pretty far here. And Berrettini does a really good job on this particular slice of finding a way to keep it down but the problem with the slice, it's really hard to create angles because there's no topspin to get your ball to dip, okay? The advantage of having topspin is one, you get more power on your shot and total speed, but two, it's the angles you can create. So when Berrettini's trying to hit this slice on the run, Djokovic knows it's time to close the net because Berrettini's angles are gonna be very, very minimal. So he's not gonna pass Djokovic in this corner probably or even down the line, even though this is more likely, but he's not gonna create nasty angles on a dead run slice here. So he closes in, guides it you know, down the line, small target, and then forces the air. But Djokovic used the Berrettini slice as an opportunity to get himself into the net. Because again, he knows if the guy is hitting a slice, it's hard to get the ball down. You can't create as good of angles as you can with topspin. So I can come into the net and get easier volleys. Let's jump into the next point now. I'll let this play in real time and then we'll break it down. Good exchange here back and forth. 
and there it finishes off, right? So let's go back to the beginning for a second. So we have Novak returning on the near side here from zone four and Berrettini serving a second serve this time. Second serve out wide, Djokovic takes it early, attacks, just guides into a small target here and deep in zone three. So immediate defense from Berrettini with that slice again, right? Djokovic moves into the court, moves him around. Berrettini here on the move, unable to neutralize Djokovic's offense and counter that offense with depth. It ends up landing short here in zone two, which means Novak can attack easily here. Short ball, attack, down the line, big target, zone three, after the small target kind of started this whole thing off. And now, again, look at Djokovic. This time, he's moving in now already before his ball has even landed on Berrettini's side of the court. He knows this is doing damage. He can see Berrettini over here as well, preparing in a slice backhand. So what do we say about a slice? Less angle, tough to keep them down and less pace. Easier to move to the net and attack these because it's harder for them to dip them at your feet, especially if they're on the run. So he's sprinting in before Berrettini's even made contact. And on this particular one, Berrettini cannot get it down. So it's way above the height of the net, right? So Djokovic making contact with the volley above the height of the net and then finishing off right there. Djokovic took every opportunity he had when he attacked Berrettini to that backhand slice to move in as often as he possibly could. He wanted to send a message to Berrettini. You sliced your backhand 70% during this whole event against everybody you played. You're not gonna be able to get away with that against me because when I attack you there and I damage you, I'm gonna finish you off. All right, before we move on to the next category of points, let's talk about something called counters. Djokovic is the counter king. Countering is basically when somebody damages you or hurts you with their shot, you're able to turn that around and either damage them back, neutralize the point completely with your shot or hit a winner. Djokovic is definitely the king of this category. I love looking at his counter skills when I break his match film down. So let's just jump into some stats on counters before we take a peek at these points. If we look at the stats for counters, we can see that Djokovic countered a total of 57 times compared to Berrettini's 31. Djokovic nearly doubled Berrettini's counter totals for the match. But what about damage though? You might say, well, Jason, Djokovic had more counters because he was playing defense more. That's true to an extent. So if you look at total damage numbers, Berrettini did damage Novak 83 times compared to Djokovic's 71. So that's plus 12 Berrettini for damage. But again, look at the counter numbers, 57 to 31 Djokovic, right? So that's plus 26 Djokovic. So that supreme defense paired up with great offense definitely outmatched somebody who's only offensively minded in this match. So let's jump into the points now and look at Djokovic's insane counter skills. Let's have the first point play through once and then we'll break it down. Very good exchange, shorter point there, right? So let's jump in. Berrettini serving from the ad side here, Djokovic returning from the near side. Let's take a look. There's that body placement serve, but it goes to the backhand. Djokovic glides out of the way with his split step, takes the backhand here, and does not do what he wants, right? He ends up hitting this short into zone two, which is really attackable for Berrettini. This is exactly what Berrettini wants. Short returns in zone two where he can step around comfortably and hit that nuclear forehand. It's nuclear, it's huge, and there it is, right? Just a massive forehand. I'll take that forehand any day. That's amazing, it's a great shot. And he hits a small target, right? So he's applying pressure with the pace and the position. The depth isn't there, but he doesn't need it with that much pace, right? But Djokovic slides over here and he's open stance sliding on the grass slash dirt at this point, and then just neutralizes that easily and counters, right? Here we go. Counters, counter damage, and Berrettini can't handle that depth and pace together. Look at that. Just from a completely defensive position, completely counter damages him, and he can't handle that and finishes him off. Crazy flexibility, crazy anticipation skills. He's sliding here on grass, which we saw some other people doing as well. And then amazing, if you look at the follow through right, he doesn't follow through all the way. Look at that, where the follow through stops. 
He's using Berrettini's pace against him. Doesn't do this on that shot. He's doing what it takes to get the ball where it needs to go. And Berrettini gave him all the pace he needed. He just absorbed it and returned it back with this abbreviated follow through and hits a laser deep and then Berrettini can't handle that. Let's move on to the next point now. All right, we'll let this one play in real time as well, real quick. Berrettini serving again. And there we go. Okay, so let's break this one down here real quick. Berrettini serving this time from the deuce side. Djokovic returning from zone four on the deuce side. Got another second serve right into the body. That was one of his favorites, right? Djokovic is very good with this inside out backhand return, but he ends up hitting this short in zone two. Exactly what Berrettini wants to get aggressive, right? If Djokovic doesn't get the depth or he doesn't move the ball around, Berrettini is going to pummel forehands, okay? He does it. He goes behind Novak. Really smart behind him because Novak, Novak's going the wrong way. He's going this way and then he's having to cut back and go retrieve this. But he's smart enough too. He's like, okay, I can make mistakes with my guesses and still get to where I need to be and figure it out. It's incredible he can do that, but that's how good his defense is. So he hits, you know, tries to hit deep here in zone three. Pretty much fine zone three, back of zone two, but it's not enough to neutralize that massive Berrettini forehand. So we got Berrettini here lining this up, right? Getting ready to hit a rocket. He does again, but what's kind of the mistake we've noticed two times in a row with Berrettini, right? He hits the ball really wide and really hard, but the depth is lacking. There's no depth. He needs to back Djokovic up more than this to really attack him. Novak comes over on the dead run and just slides the backhand into a small target in zone three like it's no problem, which is absolutely insane, okay? That's crazy, so right there and finishes it. Let's go back for a second here. Just leading up to this, we've got the open stance right here, right? Look at the feet, the position, completely open stance on the dead run. I love to, this is something kids can learn because so many times kids are just standing in place being fed a ball or you know, not learning the athletic skills. Look at the hips, they're down. Everything is down and low. The athleticism, he's not like that when he's going to the ball, but at the last second, he sinks his hips down here as he goes. So right now, and then just the hips get really low at the end right here. The level of the hips and the legs just does what he needs to do to get the ball where it needs to go on that particular shot and then finishes with that small target winner right there. Let's move on to the last point now. All right, so we have Djokovic returning on the do side here. Berrettini serving on the do side on the far side. Djokovic is back further here, closer to zone five, right? Wide serve, Djokovic chips this particular return. Tries to get it deep, but he doesn't get it deep enough. We can see Berrettini's really lined up to crush this shot inside out. Again, you can tell he's going inside out based on the position of his hips and shoulders at contact. His hip here, look at the right hip, this one right here. It's more closed off, which means he's gonna go cross court. If his hip, the right one, was more open to the net here, he would be going inside in or taking it down the line, okay? He's getting ready to crush this inside out, and he does. And unlike the first two points where Djokovic was able to counter him, you know, with different things, a damaging shot, the first one, and then the winner, this one is deeper. It's in zone three, so he's got some good depth on this shot. The other ones were shorter here, which were easier for Novak to counter. So we'll go back for a second here. Look at the depth. But again, Novak, open stance with the feet, on the dead run, down the line, small target winner. I mean, that's crazy. And if you look at it too, let's go back to here. Look at Djokovic, how close he was to the baseline originally off the return, right? Once he realizes and sees Berrettini's winding up to crank this forehand, once he sees that and realizes this one's gonna be deep, look at Djokovic's footwork. He starts to trail away from the baseline. He starts backing up as he's moving. So that by the time he gets to it, he's way further off the baseline than he was when he originally started moving to the ball. This gives him more time and it gives him the ability to adjust to Berrettini's depth. All right, so that wraps it up for our Wimbledon match analysis between Novak Djokovic and Matteo Berrettini in the Wimbledon final. If you found this video helpful, or you feel like you learned something today, make sure you smash that like and subscribe button. I'm Jason Frosto for TennisUnleashed.net. I'll see you next time.